Hello everyone, in this video we will implement Q using linked list. I would recommend that you watch the series on linked list before moving forward with this tutorial. So as we know, Q is a linear data structure which follows FIFO that is first in first out method and the two ends of the Q are called front and rear where insertion always takes place at the rear and the elements are accessed or removed from the front. Previously, we implemented Q using array. Suppose we have an array of five elements and initially both front and rear are equal to minus one. Let's insert a few elements in our array. Say firstly, we insert the element two, then we NQ three followed by five. And similarly, we insert seven and eight. Now, if we have to insert another element in this queue, we cannot do that as the array has a capacity of five elements and all the five elements are filled. So this is a problem which occurs when we are implementing Q using array. That is, we cannot increase the size of the array if we have more elements to insert. Now one solution to this would be that we create an array of very large size. But if we do that, we will be wasting a lot of memory space, which is not considered a good practice. So to solve this problem, we will implement Q using linked list. And as we know, linked list is a linear data structure which is made up of nodes connected together by pointers, where each node has two main parts, the data and the link part, where data contains the value to be stored and the link part contains the address of the next node. Now, as we create each node dynamically, so using a linked list, we can create a queue of variable size and depending on our need, we can increase or decrease the size of the queue. So let's see how we will use a linked list to create a queue. So let's take this example of a linked list of three elements where the head pointer is pointing to the first element in the linked list. Now with linked list, we have to perform all the operations related to queues that is NQ, DQ, show front and is empty. And we have to do that in constant time that is big O of one because all these operations with Q should take constant time. So now if we consider the starting of the linked list as the front of the queue and the end of the linked list as the rear of the queue, then we can perform the DQ operation in constant time by moving the head pointer to the next node and deleting the current node. But we will not be able to perform the NQ operation in constant time because NQ operation would be similar to inserting a new node at the end of the linked list. And for that, we will have to traverse the linked list to reach the last node that is the rear of the queue so that we can insert the new node. But this would take a time complexity of big O of n as we will have to traverse n nodes to reach the end of the linked list. Therefore, if we have only the head pointer, we cannot perform both the functions nq and dq in constant time. So to solve this problem, instead of head, we will use two pointers front and rear to keep track of the starting and the end of the linked list. And now using the front pointer, we can dq in constant time and using the rear pointer, we can enqueue a new node in constant time. Now let's start implementing our queue. So firstly, to create a node, we will define the structure node, which has an integer variable data to store the value and the pointer link of type node to store the address of the next node. Next, we will declare our front and rear pointers and initialize them to null. And with this, we can easily write our is empty function to tell if the queue is empty or not. And the queue is empty when both front and rear are equal to null. So in this case, we will return true, else we will return false. So now let's implement our NQ function to insert a value in the queue. And as initially the queue is empty, both the pointers front and rear have the value null. Now let's say we enqueue the value one. And to do that, we will first create a new node and store its address in the pointer PTR. So let's say that the node is created at an address 100 which is stored in the pointer PTR. Next, we will put the value one in the data part of the node by making the data part of PTR equal to value and we will make its link part equal to null. Now, as we did in the case of the array, when we insert the first element in the queue, we have to adjust our front pointer. That is, if front is equal to null, it means that we are inserting the first node and when we do that, we will make front equal to PTR so that it points to the first node and we will also make rear equal to PTR. Next, if we enqueue another element say two, then we will again create a new node whose address will be stored in the pointer PTR. And then we will make the data part equal to two. And as this node would now be the end of the linked list, we will make the link part equal to none. 
that is we are again repeating the first three steps in our function but now as we are inserting the second node our front is not equal to null so we will go in the else part where we have to adjust a few things that is firstly we will make the link part of rear equal to ptr therefore the link part of the first node will be 200 which means that our first node is pointing to the second node and now we will move our rear pointer to the next node by equating it to ptr therefore we have successfully inserted the second node in our queue with front and rear at their correct position in the queue next suppose we enqueue another element 3 then again we will create a new node and our pointer ptr will have the address to that node then we will make the data part equal to 3 and we will put null in the link part and then we will make the link part of rear equal to ptr that is now the link part of the second node will have the value 500 and then we will move the rear pointer to our newly created node which will now be the end of the queue now let's see how we will implement the dq function firstly we will check if the queue is empty or not and if the queue is empty we will simply print that else we will perform our dq operation and the first case would be if front is equal to rear that is there is only one element in the queue and in this case we will simply free the memory allocated to that node and we will make both front and rear equal to null which will mean that the queue is now empty but if there are more than one element in the queue that is the else case suppose we have a linked list of three elements and as we know in case of queue we remove the element from the front so to remove the first node firstly we will make ptr equal to front and then we will move the front pointer to the next node by making front equal to the link part of front therefore front will now have the address 200 and it will point to the second node and now we can simply remove the first node by freeing the memory allocated to the node pointed by ptr and we have successfully performed the dq operation now in the show front function first we will check if the queue is empty or not and if the queue is not empty we will simply display the data in the node pointed by front now let's see how we will display the queue when we are implementing it using linked list. So we start our display queue function and firstly we check if the queue is empty or not and if the queue is not empty that is the else case then we will create a pointer ptr and equate it to front and while ptr is not equal to null we will display the data part of the current node and then we will move the pointer ptr to the next node by making ptr equal to the link part of ptr. So let's try this out. Firstly we display the data of the current node that is 1 and then we move the pointer ptr to the next node and we again display the data of this node and move ptr to the next node. Now we display the value 3 and this time when we make ptr equal to the link part of ptr, ptr would become null and we have successfully displayed all the elements in the queue. I have linked the code for this tutorial in the description. Thank you for watching.